but something very good is happening when a bear market comes. When the tide comes goes out, you see who is swimming naked. And this is what's happening in bear markets. Mr. Spread, George Vlad, uh, George, <laughs> that uh, he is not just a trader, but he's a business uh, a man. He he found a new uh, project uh, that maybe he's gonna tell us few words uh, to you know to make everybody aware about uh, what what happened there. I know more, but you know he's the main guy that he uh, can uh, told us about the paradigm uh, uh, shift. Uh, George uh, is not just you know a friend of mine, but he's an invest in he's an investor in Sense for Fit, uh, but he's also an advisor, and uh, you know he was he was one of the main guy you know and the first guy uh, that I called uh, uh, at the beginning to tell him like uh, you know like you know a verbal speech a pitch deck um, at the phone like it was twenty five minutes. And I said about sense for fit, and I said, uh, George, I need you for 25, 30 minutes on the phone. So just, you know, listen to me and tell me the truth, you know, what your thoughts about what I'm going to say and explain him, you know, all the sense for fit ecosystem in 25 minutes. And we didn't have the pitch deck at that time. We didn't have the tokenomics. We didn't have the white paper. It was just ideas on a whiteboard uh, in my home office. Uh, and I was there with Yonuts, and after this, you know, for income and Christian Gergina and so on, and Mihai Marinesco uh, and other guys. And, you know, uh, George said, you know, it's amazing. If you guys really can, could do this, it's going to be one of the best projects from Web3 industry. And, you know, because he said this, you know, I was excited. I was like, oh, if George said this, you know, we're going to go for it and we're going to smash it. And it was the same uh, like uh, with Marius. Uh, 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 when I spoke with him, he said, look, guys, it's an amazing idea. Go for it. It was the same with the co-founder of XFI, Christian. And because of that validation from some important guys that was for me important that time, and you was one of them, you know, and you guys who was one of them, we, we built what we built. And now we have guys, uh, by the way, we have one year anniversary this month for Sense for Fit. And we started around 8 December, you know, all the flow on the white paper. So thank you so much, guys. And happy, like, a lot of years for, you know, to have a lot of successful years for Sense for Fit. So, George, you have the microphone. And uh, we cannot wait, you know, to tell us, you know, how Bitcoin would be $100,000. So, you know, that's the main question for a trader. When is going to be the next bull market, you know? And I'm going to put this stupid question. George, when is going to be the next bull, you know? Uh, I'm going to do like, you know, so, you know, some people ask, well, when, when airdrop, sir, so, sir, when is the next bull market? <laughs> I'm joking. But, you know, <laughs> it's real, you know, I'm curious. <laughs> You're curious, right. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to you guys, to Sense for Fit, for the amazing achievements that you had until now. It's absolutely... I'm I'm dumbstruck to be honest, and how many things you were able to achieve even before thinking about raising money. Um, like you said in the beginning, when you when you told me about your concept, because at that point at that time was a concept, and uh, your notes explained so passionately, I was and it was true for me. It was a very nice coupling between a Web two business or a real uh, real life business and uh, blockchain. And I said, if these guys that are, are going to put the energy into it and they're going to gather around them the proper team, which you did and you went above it because it's, it's not just the proper team. In my opinion, is one of the best. And I, I know that sounds weird, the, one of the most complete teams out there that I ever seen because this is one of the main keys that I check when I check a project. I was like, okay, they have everything. I mean, I was scrolling down your page when you got into the into the team, and I was like, wow, they have also this, and they have this, and they have this. Was, they are covered on all the departments. Now it's just about the execution. And boy, did you execute! I mean, I think you were among the first, if not the first, project on Elrond who coupled an app with Mayar. I mean, you can download your app and you can you you couple your app from App Store or from Google Store with Mayar. So just seeing how much you guys evolved and seeing your passion. I knew that you have the recipes for success. You had the sugar spice and everything nice in order for this uh, project to go forward. And on top of that, you took Black Hat as advisors and you took, uh, you took uh, top people near you. 
And this is where I'm gonna go forward and talk about what I have to talk this evening. I'm absolutely honored to be in such a good company. Um, when I heard Felix uh, talking about the things that he achieved and he, it's like from another lifetime away. And I think at that moment in time, I even, I, I even didn't, I was not aware 25 years ago. No, I was not aware about, yeah, maybe I was aware about a bit of computers. Around 20 years ago, I started using a computer. So I'm also an old guy, but seeing Felix also joining this kind of uh, project that you guys have, it's another validation. You didn't need any more validation, but it's another validation that you guys have what it takes. And because I know for sure that Felix would never put his name or Black Hat would never put their name. And now seeing uh, Shailesh this evening with X5 putting their name, I know that you guys have whatever it takes to make it big. And if you continue with the same drive and you continue with the same passion, and I know you will, most likely you're going to go... Uh, milestone after milestone, and you will gonna be one of the forces pushing forward the Web3 adoption. This is what I want to say about you guys. So again, congratulations on everything that you did. And I'm honored to be in, a, in such, a, such a nice company. Regarding your question, uh, Bitcoin is gonna be $100,000 when it wants. This is the best question. This is the time when it's gonna go to $100,000. Whenever, whenever Bitcoin feels to go to $100,000, it will go. But um, I will speak about this. Uh, before that, I will, I'm gonna say also a little bit about myself. Uh, these are the things that I didn't speak about so much until now. Uh, mostly people know me as uh, George from uh, Elrond Group, the guy who joined the group when there were 1,000 people and he started posting uh, trades and uh, analysis regarding Bitcoin, Elrond, the, the dollar and S&P 500 when he was in Vietnam. And he was also putting nice pictures from the beaches uh, in Vietnam. This is what people know me. And now people know me from um, Twitter because I broke I, I broke my comfort zone and I opened a Twitter space and I started writing there in English analysis for everybody. Um, but Mr. Spread is more than that. Mr. Spread is a trader for the last 12 years. And uh, besides being a trader, he's a business development manager, meaning that uh, for the last 12 years, I traveled all around the world in Europe and in Asia. Uh, Europe, like Ukraine, uh, uh, Bulgaria, Lithuania, also some sometimes in Romania, in Italy, in uh, some other places. And I had offices that I helped build from uh, from scratch. So I like to build things from the beginning. This is uh, the reason why I was also involved in Black Hat uh, at some point in time. And this is the reason why I got myself into SensorField because I love beginnings and I love startups. So this is what I've done in Europe. Uh, before coming to uh, back to Romania two years ago, I was stationed in Vietnam for three years where uh, I was a business development manager and I ended up being a partner in that company. Uh, again, building a, a financial uh, marketing company from zero, from scratch. I like to see people uh, succeeding. I like to see people grow around me. And I like to, and I like the blood, blood, sweat and tears that comes with the beginnings because I really think that beginnings are very magical. And if you know how to take that opportunity and you have the drive and you have the team and you go day in and day out, you will succeed. So this is who I am. Um, and a little bit uh, regarding my background because not a lot of you knew about this. And still regarding my background, in Web3, um, I have, I don't think it's a romantic story. People ask me often, um, do you, how, when did you first uh, hear about Bitcoin? And I'm going to say uh, eight years ago. And since then, and, and they asked me, so you, you invested then? No. Why? Because uh, I was uh, ignorant. And like everybody, I thought, oh, Bitcoin is a scam. Ethereum is a scam. I'm not going to touch them. Imagine I was a trader and I had them in my platform, but I just hashed them out and I put them in the bottom of my uh, trading list because I didn't care about them. But after the COVID crash, I had the aha moment like everybody has the aha moment. You can tell someone about Bitcoin now here and there, and you can tell them all night long that it's about decentralization. It's about ownership. It's about the sovereign individual. It's about no borders. It's about transparency, all these kind of things. Until then, they're not going to have that aha moment. And until it's not going to click for them, you, you will see that you cannot convince people to do that. And this is what happened to me after COVID crash, after I heard the sailor speaking, and I had an aha moment, and I said, okay, something is happening. So if I was too young to take part of the um, internet revolution when uh, Google was growing, when Amazon was growing in 2000 and after the dot-com bubble, I was like, okay, I'm not going to miss this train again. Something is happening. I see people going into this. I need to be a part of this some way. Like, 
one way or the other. And I started accumulating Bitcoin and I started uh, accumulating Elrond. And after that, uh, joining uh, Black Hat in their uh, beginnings. And after that, sense for fit. But who I am in Web3, I think I'm part of the community. I am, let's say, one of the guys from the community and I'm still one of the guys of the community and this is a blessing in disguise for me because you asked me uh, uh, Antonio regarding paradigm paradigm sh paradigm shift started only two weeks ago and it starts as an educational platform but it's more than that it's a it's a feeling it's an ethos it's a way of thinking and I want people uh, when 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 people will say paradigm and they will think about shifters because these are the shifters of the community they will think like oh this is that group of people that change their mindset in order to become better to invest better to eat better to look better through sense for fit you know and to help other people who cannot help themselves so paradigm shift and the shifters but paradigm shift as a community it is gonna it's not gonna be just a community it's gonna be a way of feeling and a way of thinking and one of the things that, that why I said I, it was a blessing in disguise for me uh, and the way I'm building Paradigm Shift is because I'm building from a perspective of a, of a user because I am in the communities. I was in the communities. So I'm not building from the perspective of a business developer or of a developer or of an entrepreneur. I'm building as one of the guys who used all the products until now. And I know exactly or much close like what the community wants what the community needs so i'm a user i'm an end user i'm a consumer so this is the way how bar paradigm is going to move forward this is about me and my background now uh, what i'm not gonna, gonna, gonna talk about uh, forward is what do i know it's uh, what's going on in the market and um, one of the main topics uh, was uh, why was the bull run so powerful? Well, the, bus the bull run, the previous bull run that we had was so powerful because of the monetary policies in, uh, in the central banks around the world, the big central banks, starting with the Federal Reserve from the United States, European Central Bank, Bank of Japan, People Bank of China, um, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, Royal Bank of New Zealand and uh, Royal Bank of uh, Australia. These big banks around the world but not only them, because other smaller banks around the world followed their model. They started um, printing a lot of money. Actually, printing is a little bit rudimental, but they increased their monetary base. And people started having free money and synthetic money. So, of course, they started buying cryptos. They started buying stocks. They started spending a lot. So this was the reason why we had that V-shaped recovery. Uh, although we had the COVID crash, after all the financial, uh, most of the financial assets crashed, we didn't have a period of stabil st stability, yeah, of st stabilization. We had the, like a V-shaped recovery. And that happened because of the aggressive monetary policies in the United States especially. And this was the main reason why we went up so, so, so hard. Now, going forward, um, the bear market is actually quite bad uh, in this in, in this uh, in in the times we are speaking. Bad from a perspective that it's quite deep, and maybe people didn't expect again to be so deep. But they forget that it didn't matter if it was 80 years ago. It doesn't matter if it's now, or it, it it's not gonna matter if it's gonna be 50 years from now. The human mind and the human spirit is the same. Although we are very different and we are 8 billion people something right now all over the world, there are two main emotions that govern the markets and financial markets. 80 years ago in Romania, in India, in Ukraine, in United States, there are two big emotions that govern the markets, greed and fear. And this is going to happen from now on, and it, it happened before. Just media is just making a, such a big case out of FTX. Yes, FTX was a fiasco, and now we're going to talk about it. But if you remember in 2008, when Lehman Brothers fell, it was way bigger than that. And it was, I think, trillions of dollars that got wiped out because of the great financial crisis, and only one banker went to jail. But you see, media doesn't write about that because media was among those guys. But now they make such a huge case out of this. So they try to push out a lot of retail to induce the fear, one of the two emotions. So they can enter the market even heavier. And when everybody mo or most of the retail that is now inside the market is going to be out, they're going to start deploying even maybe more capital like BlackRock or other institutions. So um, I don't think actually that this bear market is very bad for people who are prepared and for people who are preparing themselves for what's moving forward. If you think about it, 
we are among the misfits. We are among the weirdos of this of this uh, niche because it's still a niche around the world. Only four percent. I'm gonna say again, around the world, only four percent of the people have crypto. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Elrond, Sensorfeed, Black Hat, maybe XFi in the future. So imagine there are still 96% of the people globally to join this system because a lot of people are saying, oh, Bitcoin is dead. It's not going to be dead. The internet was not dead after the dot com bubble. But something very good is happening when a bear market comes. It clears out a lot of trash. And I know that sounds hard, but it happens also on financial markets. Warren Buffett has a very nice uh, quote. He says that when the tide comes goes out, you see who is swimming naked. And this is what's happening in bear markets. You see who is over collateralized. You see who doesn't have a nice strategy. You, you see who doesn't have a, a lot of funds to survive because bear markets is about building. Bear market is about survival. Bear markets are about uh, taking advantage of opportunities when other people are out of the market because they didn't have a proper plan, because they didn't have proper mindset. So this is what's happening right now. The collapse with FTX and their failure uh, triggered a lot of critically important events because people were not checking into FTX for reasons that elude me right now. But FTX didn't have proper risk management as a, a centralized exchange and as a business who has billions and billions of dollars. First of all, they didn't even have stop losses. This is for me as a trader, I feel sick in my stomach. Whatever, whenever I hear Caroline, their former CEO, if I can call her a CEO, when she gave that interview and she said, stop loss? Ah, we don't use stuff like that. Okay, you don't use stuff like that, but this was one of the main causes because at that level, a stop loss is not even enough. You have to have extra measures. You have to have extra entities that all the time audit you. You have so much money because we're talking about billions of dollars. You can hire people from traditional finance with 10, 20, 30 years of experience to take care of your uh, risk department. You have to have a full risk department, not stop loss. You have to have people who work for people who work for people who have alarms going even if the smallest uh, DeFi protocol doesn't connect and doesn't have enough uh, liquidity among themselves. So this is the one of the most important thing in my opinion. And regarding what it influenced, well, I, I was talking about this on, on Twitter and also on Paradigm. One of the biggest banks from the United States that handles crypto directly, Silvergate, uh, they are in big trouble right now. So if also they're going to have these uh, problems, they're going to most likely drag even more institutions after them. Genesis has problems. Gray, Grayscale has problems. I know that crypto.com may have some problems. But what, just, what did I just say a few moments ago? When the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. So this is what's happening. But this is also an opportunity. I said it before, fortunes are made in bear markets because this is when you accumulate heavily at discounted price, different projects, projects that are still here, that are still building, that are, that are still focused on the community. And you're going to obtain those profits in the next bull run. So what do you have to do right now as a retail investor or as an investor is to focus on the teams that were building before, that are building now, that have products and that have skin in the game. I mean, this is what I'm looking for. And this is why until now, Black Hat and Sense for Fit, check those, check those boxes. They didn't come into the market promising, oh, we're going to do something. They came into the market and they already had a team, they had a product or a tested uh, an MVP that was uh, able to be tested. And now they just scale their business more and more. And if I understood correctly, and I, if I see correctly from what uh, Shaila said and from other sources, this is what XV is doing for the last few years. So this guy invested already massively from their, from their own pockets. So this is what I want to see forward. And this is how I would position myself for if, if I was an investor, looking at this kind of projects that build Build, are building and they're continue, uh, are, will continue to build going forward. And more importantly, that they focus on the community because I think this is the most important thing for people who are in Web3 to understand that your team, your advisors, and your, um, your whole organization is the brain 
and the community is the heart. So if at some point in time, you don't take care of one of these parts, you most likely gonna lose some focus. I see good teams and I've seen good teams that they, they were focusing on the community in the beginning, but they forgot where they began and they left the community somewhere aside and they don't get in touch with their community the most, uh, like uh, so much like in the beginning. Listen, add, for me, this is the purest example, Charles Hopkins from Cardano. I'm not such a technical guy to judge Cardano, but that guy, it's a mastermind when it comes to community. He was always there. And that's why this is one of the reasons why they have one of the strongest, if not the strongest community around the Web3. So these are the keys of going forward. How can we avoid situations like FTX going forward? Well, with better risk management, I, I really think that companies and I'm not talking about checks, I'm talking in general companies who build something, uh, it's very important for them to understand their, their own risks. What are my liabilities? How much cash am, am I burning? Uh, what's my uh, cash burn rate? Not how much I'm burning, how fast I'm burning this, this amount of money. Will I, uh, am I gonna last 12 months? Will I gonna last 14 months? What if this is gonna be like not a recession, but a depression? And we're gonna go through something of 16, maybe 24 months. Will I have enough funds to go through this? Yes, okay, so it means that I'm stable. What do I do? What do I need to do next? And this is something very important that uh, uh, Sense for Fit and um, and Antonio uh, put again into my mind. A few months ago, before they were speaking about listing, they had the big option to list on a very big exchange. I think it was top ten or top five. I can't remember. But those guys, even in bear market, have have ludicrous demands. I mean, to ask a project in a bear market for half a million dollars to be listed, I mean, you have to be mad. And okay, you know, in Romania, we have a saying, it's not stupid the one who asks, it's stupid the one who gives. So fair game, they're asking, they're trying to skin the, the, to skin the cow or squeeze the lemon is their job. But when Antonio told me that he's gonna, uh, I wanted to say something else. When Antonio told me that he's gonna decline uh, politely the offer and focus with that amount on customer acquisition, on stabilizing the project, I knew again that this guy means business and he, he is an entrepreneur and he thinks smartly about the future because he could have said, listen, we're gonna take this half a million dollars, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna launch on this, uh, on this uh, exchange, he's gonna give us visibility. But he said, you know what? I would rather use these funds for development, scaling, more partners bringing on board than just going for an image hit. And this is what this is what can help future businesses and with this kind of attitude, mindset and model make it. Because a lot of people and a lot of leaders of projects think only short term. What, what like three months, six months, even a year. In a business and in entrepreneurship, one year is very short term. You have to have a plan like two, three, four, five years going forward. And this is what, I think it's it's one of the ingredients to to succeed. To have good risk management, to be aware of your community and stay in touch with them, and to think long term. Now, um, I was asked a lot: what's the, the difference between a bear market and a bear market that comes with a big panic uh, when big players like FTX fail and go bankrupt? Well, I don't think it's such a big uh, difference because although I was not here in the crypto sphere when it was the last bear market, but I did researches and I know that each bear market comes with some failure. Last time I have no idea who was, but each cycle has uh, its own bad actor or let's say its own black swan, like it was now Terra and it was FTX. I can't remember what was the, the other uh, cycles uh, factors, but this is, uh, this is an effect of what's happening. When the tide comes, you see who's swimming naked. This is happening, it's regular because businesses don't have a straight uh, and, uh, and a stable model. It happened before and it's got, it's, although I really hope that it's not gonna happen in the next cycle, but I'm, I'm fully aware that it's gonna happen in the next cycle. Because Mario said that also, it's about greed. And these are the two emotions again. People who run businesses, they're not robots, at least not now. Maybe in the future, AI is gonna take over at some part, at some point, I hope not, at least not uh, running businesses. But going forward, people are still gonna do mistakes because people are greedy. 
because people are fearful. So in order to remove this kind of uh, emotions from the equation, you have to have a plan and you have to execute on that, that, that plan with maximum discipline and sticking to that plan. Because the moment you alter and the moment you don't add a stop loss to your positions as a, as a checks when you're trading with, but this was the problem, trading with customer funds, come on. There were some very big no-nos happening there. So going forward, um, like my previous speakers said, I think like uh, you pointed very well, Shailesh, uh, one of the best thing that we can do during this bear market before, uh, besides uh, building is to learn from past mistakes. So we do our absolute best to not repeat in the future. And this, this is not applying only for businesses. This is applying also for us as, individu as individuals, because the definition of madness is doing the same mistakes all over and again, and we expect different results, right? So this is one of the key components going forward. Um, I want to also go on. No, no, is it? Uh, okay, uh, going forward in the next uh, three to six months, um, I still think that it's going to get worse before it's going to get better. Um, and I don't want to sound uh, like a doom bringer, but I also don't want to uh, think about something and say something else because I'm not that type of guy. People who know me from the last two years, they know that I'm straight to the mustard. So we still have the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, right? Uh, we don't know how much that's going to last. Uh, we still have the Federal Reserve of United States who is hiking the rates, meaning that they're going to, again, most likely give power to the dollar. When we have a strong dollar, most likely it's going to put pressure on stocks, indexes, and on Bitcoin. And from a technical point of view, Bitcoin doesn't look so good on the charts as long as it stays under some levels, like 17K, 18K, even 20K. Until we're not going to see demand coming back, but not on futures, on spot demand, Bitcoin is still going to stay under these levels. But people, you see, it's funny how the mind works. People were more interested on Bitcoin when it was 69,000 than when it's 16,000. It, 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 it's always going to happen. That's why I hope through Paradigm and through all the work that I'm doing on Twitter, on Telegram, and also on Paradigm, I really hope that people are going to get inspired to change their mindset and to become part of this paradigm shift to do the other way around, thinking that, okay, it's smart to start accumulating from these prices. Okay, defensively, meaning that you accumulate not so often like you're doing in the bull run, but you still accumulate under these prices. So you can capitalize on your profits on the next people who are going to do the same mistake that you did before. So this is my plan going forward. And um, the last thing which I want to end is uh, what should a project have in order to be successful in this market and what it should focus. And here I want to ask Antonio if he means a project in general in crypto or a project now under these market conditions, because this was one of the topics that Antonio wanted to talk about. In this about. market condition, but you can say about your approach, about both, if, you, uh, if it's coming in your mind. Okay, sure. Uh, first of all, let's let's uh, take it outside of this current macroeconomical context. I think the most important thing that you should focus on is your team. Build your team, stay with your team and your community. If you don't have a community in Web3, you can have the best product, you ha can have the best idea. If you don't build a strong community around your project and you don't uh, spend time with your community, understanding it needs, you're not going to have success. And I, I know projects who had amazing products and they have amazing products, they delivered, they have partnerships even with governments around the world and with top companies, but they are sidetracked and they are like this and they, are, they have tunnel vision and they focus on build, 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 and they don't focus on the community. If you don't put your heart and soul into the community, you're not going to most likely go forward. And another important thing, to not forget where you began. If you forget your beginnings and if you forget your roots and what made you strong, be it advisors, be it community, be it your team, this is also a failure a, a recipe for, a, for failure. And this is, in my opinion, this is the, the recipe for success. And this moment, uh, if you come back to the current uh, context, you should think about survival because bear markets are about survival. And this kind of microeconomical context is about survival. So you should think as best as you can to have and to make sure that you have enough funds to survive the next 12, maybe even 18 to 24 months and to continue to deliver and to continue to build during these macroeconomical conditions. This is my point of view of the, of the state of the market. 
Good, Mr. Spread, George, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you was the last speaker today, uh, but you know, we love our, your energy and uh, we are grateful for your maturity uh, with the explanation of everything, you know, because, uh, you know, to be able to be loved like a trader, even when you say like Bitcoin don't, don't look so good, you know, it's an ability. And, you know, it's, yeah, you know, uh, probably a lot of, uh, traders gain more followers because they say oh the next bull is coming you know and people start to follow and like them and, and so on but you know you gain community and you gain love from the community because of your transparency and of your knowledge 